Yo, it's Resident Evil. Look at him, man. He's Resident Evil. He's almost as he's almost, he's almost as cool as a um, Metroid man. Resident Evil's been a staple to video games since like forever. Well, since like video games started to take off, at least. I mean, like you know, it's old, but like there's older things out there. But even then, it was mainly a staple to one type of video game, horror games. And even then, not even to all horror games. Mainly just one category: survival horror. <laughs> Spooky. If you're unfamiliar with that term, I'm sure you're probably going like, Psh, yeah, most horror things people try and like survive, like, like, duh. As broad and unspecific that term may seem, it actually boils down to a very certain kind of horror game. Well, I, I mean, it used to at least, I mean, like, what? But like, what is survival horror? Well, it's kind of, it's like, it, it, just, just give me a minute. <laughs> It's basically the horror environment, but where the player has at least some ability to survive and fight back. In horror, you're pretty much always weak and vulnerable. You feel like you're in danger the entire time, and fighting back is either useless or oppressive with no hope of success. But in some games, it's your job to fight back. In fact, it's how you progress entirely. You have a limited arsenal, which you use to beat back the overwhelming dangers of the world, even if just a little bit. And if it's done right, that can really drive in an oppressive, hopeless feeling even more than if you're just completely useless. Feeling the struggle of attempting to fight off enemies and horrific monsters than just running because mechanically you can't do anything else. Those situations where you have to resort to running, that's when it, like, it creates the perfect, both engaging and terrifying atmosphere. But that's basically why I love survival horror, and that's what Resident Evil is. Or was. That distressed feeling of being on the last magazine, edging for the next safe point. But was Resident Evil the first of its kind? No. Resident Evil took a concept first created by Alone in the Dark, which pretty much nailed down and created the survival horror genre. And then it polished it so much, it's like they bought all the detergent from the grocery store and they're like, we're all out, and Capcom went, oh no! And thus, Resident Evil was born. And man, it was dope. It had the sweet tension, the boss battles, the feel of preserving your items and ammo, the cringy voice acting. I don't know what happened. Barry! Where's Barry? It had pretty much everything a survival horror game needed. I mean, like, yeah, wait, he yeah, quit. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Right? Back in the day, this is what horror was. Resident Evil was a horror title to have. Was it perfect? No. It hasn't aged well at all, but you know, whatever. Had its time to shine, and that's what we have sequels for to improve and innovate on refined concepts made by the original, right? Right? Fast forward about eight years of four more main titles, a remake, some spin offs, a bunch of kind of. Uh, obscure projects? What? And along comes Resident Evil 4, which is the sixth main installment in the series. Like, how does it even work? Why? Okay, so like, Resident Evil 4, it's a pretty good game. Like, I don't know if you've played it or not, but like, oh wait, of course you have, it's freaking Resident Evil 4, baby! Like the fourth one, which is like two twos, which is like two plus two, and Resident Evil 2 is, is pretty good, so it's like double good, right? It's pretty much become a staple of the survival horror genre. In fact, probably more than the original Resident Evil was. It took an already refined and well thought out genre and redesigned it. So now it still works in the survival horror medium it was going for, but is also more accessible to newer fans. There weren't any of those intimidating camera angles and stuff, you know? But at the same time, it was still satisfying to veteran fans. It kept the right formula and elements which made the older games survival horror, like iconic enemies, managing resources, exploration. You know, good game design, which... Capcom kind of forgot how to do after a while. It's a perfect example of trying to please everyone and actually achieving it. Which is crazy, because you don't usually want to do that. Because you can't. Like, you can't please everyone. You can barely please anyone these days. But Capcom kind of went, eh, psh, Leon, more like money. Everyone loves this game. Well, like, pretty much everyone. I mean, there's still some like, Idiots. I mean, I wouldn't call all the controls perfect. Some of them still feel kind of clunky and slow. It's come on, it's right, just right there. Come on, which, come on, what you, what you... But it's easily aged the best out of all the Resident Evil games, even including the ones that came out after it. And hell, perhaps the best out of pretty much all the older survival horror games. But honestly, one of the best things about Resident Evil 4 is how it introduces the player to the game. How it teaches them the controls and, like, ways to not die. I mean, like, I've said before that I like watching my friends play through games, and this is one of those games. I think I've already said that before as well. It's not just me, right? Like, other people do that as well, right? Right? It wasn't until I actually paid proper attention to the first 10 or 20 minutes of the game that I realized that this game, this game's so good. This game's so good. Okay, so you know when your friend's playing something and you kind of you kind of have to teach them how to play? 
Like, the game just gives them a menu with the controls and just kind of goes, Ellie, you, 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 you'll be fine. Well, something I very strongly believe is that to learn something, you have to learn through experience. I mean, it's just it's just logic, isn't it? Well, you don't just read a road code or whatever, and you're just like, yeah, I'm good to drive. Like, watch out, Jeff. Like, no, you need to practice driving in multiple conditions. Like, duh. It... Idiot? Well, for the most part, it's the same with games, just not, like, illegal. You can tell someone what button does what all you want, but until they enter a situation where they need to use these, or at least remember these controls on their own, they're not gonna learn, or at least not very quickly. And with some games, it's either lazily difficult or just annoying, because it either drops you in with no ground to learn or just gives you, like, a, t a tutorial or something. Like, just... <laughs> just, just let me play. Like, take a game like Shadow of the Colossus, for example. It's like my favorite game, by the way. Like, it had a little uh, t -t tutorial thingy, sure, but when it told the player the controls, it demanded the player learn what they were doing first. They had to experiment a bit and, like, get, at least get some ground with the controls. And if they messed up, the game kind of punished them. Like, you gotta do it again. You you gotta do it right. That's the, that's, that's the way. And to top it all off, once they've learned all that stuff, they, the game puts them up against a freaking, like, colossi thing and goes, You'll be, you're good. Go, 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 go be, go make daddy proud. It's a way of putting the player in a situation where they have to use these new skills. Or even figuring out where they have to use these skills. And going back to what I said before, there are times in games where you kind of have to explain to your friend what the hell to do. Well, Resident Evil 4 is a game you don't do that with. Like, ever. It's a crime if you do, actually. Like, I'll disown you. Just like I disown people who put on freaking pineapple on their pizza. Like, it's a fruit. It's sweet. You don't put that on pizza. I mean, pineapple's pretty good, but like, on pizza, just... It doesn't make sense. Like, you got tomato sauce, and it's like, you know what? Let's put a fruit on here. Like, why? Why would you do that? It's stupid. It's freaking stupid! Because the game's entire first stage is set out to get you into the mindset of the controls. Letting the player teach themselves by experimenting is most of the time a far better way of learning the game. And you learn through your actual progression in the game, opposed to being taken out of the experience with some stupid menu or forced tutorial. Okay, so after all that rambling, I'm gonna go through the first level Resident Evil 4 with this in mind. So bear with me. Okay, so yep, evil experiments. Yeah, Resident Evil 2, yeah, we got it. Six years past that. Yeah, we got it, yeah. Amigos, Amiibos, all that stuff. Okay, here, in this scene right here. This is a tiny sequence which subconsciously adds something to the opening level. We're given an indication that there's something lurking and potentially dangerous. There's something threatening to the characters here. Ah, it's freezing. So cold all of us are it. Ah, must be my imagination. It's something threatening, but it's not shown to us what it is yet. A tone is set, but it's not entirely established. But I'm gonna get into that later. You could argue that this is just a cliche scene in horror, which it kinda is, I guess, but like, it ties into what we're about to see, which I'm gonna come back to in more depth. So we finally reach the location, and interestingly enough, we have a codec call kind of thing. Except here it's only used to establish the plot, as well as Leon's uh, character? At no point does Hunter, uh, uh, get, uh, what? At no point does Hunnigan ever go, You remember how to walk, Leon? You, you press, uh, you, you, you press forward! I mean, why would she? You're freaking Leon S. Kennedy, sent to save the president's daughter. Why would she need to explain to Leon how to do stuff? She trusts him to get on with his job and, like, save the day. Wait. What he's trained to do, which is also kind of trusting the player to get on with it and play the game, which you do straight after the codec call. Well, that's convenient. Okay, so this part doesn't actually have that much to do with the opening level. I just, I, I thought it was, I just thought it was kind of interesting. All right, all right, okay. So we finally reached the opening level. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna break down what it teaches the player into two sections. Okay, let's go. Stage one: self-taught mentality. Notice how I say self-taught opposed to something like teaching them? It's because that's one of the things that happens here. The game is set out so the player teaches themselves how to play. It just provides you with the right push and environment to do so. So the basic objective for this part is to reach this house right here. The player realizes they can move around and move forward and all that, but once they get rather close to the house, there's something lurking and threatening there. A lot like the scene in the opening. Except the difference here is that you're in a vulnerable state now. Now you're in control of Leon, opposed to before. This is the thing with video games. It's a difference between passive horror and interactive horror. This is actually a very subtle and interesting way of getting the player into this mindset. 
They've experienced something in which they're completely safe and separate from the characters, aka a passive experience. And now, they're in an interactive space, where their actions can now determine their progression. Before, they were just watching from like a, a safe zone, separate from Leon. But here, even though still a cutscene, anything that amounts from it can still impact the player. They can see a potential threat, but the difference here is that they are the ones who have to go and deal with it. The player. They're the ones who have to confront it. So here it's like the game saying, are you are you sure you're ready? Are you sure you're ready to confront whatever's in that spooky house there? In which the player, if they haven't already, likely checks their controls again before they go into the house, realizing that there's some potential danger, wanting to make sure that if they do encounter a threat, they know how to deal with it. Or they'll just run in there anyway. And if they haven't already, they're gonna try and figure out how to use that stupid gun Leon is holding. And by this point, they'll realize the controls are kind of different. There's no run and gun strafe shoot bibbidi bop. The aiming requires your full attention. Like, you can't do a lot of stuff a normal human being can do. So the player is most likely gonna mess around with it for a bit, maybe aim down some shots, figure out how the melee works, etc. I'd like to mention at this point in the pause menu, the player can find an instructional guide about the controls and how to play the game. But it's never put up in your face like freaking other games. The developers would much rather you get used to the controls on your own terms. Like, Opposed to going, oh crap, there's something in there. Make sure you know how to shoot. The player goes, oh crap, there's something in there. Do I know how to not die? Because that way is going to be way closer to the intended experience than studying a menu for a few minutes and then going into the game. Learning, then engaging, in this case, is never going to be as immersive as learning through engaging. And later when you pass the first small area, you're given an extension to the instructional guide and told you have one all along. Huh. But you didn't even need it. Probably. The game's also got a bunch of things around which helps them learn the mechanics of the game, like jumping over things. That's that, that's a game mechanic? Okay, so the player finally decides to enter the house. Cool. But right there, there's another real subtle warning. <coughs> As they move closer, they're reminded that there is something around the corner. There's something that's seemingly a potential threat to them as a player. Like, oh man, I don't, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know about this man. <laughs> it's like another small warning as they leave the safe environment they've been missing around in, and going into a new one with potential danger. And that's what Resident Evil is all about. <sighs> this game, man. Something, it's something real good. Though you might just say, well, whatever, that seems easier to do than making a tutorial. Well, maybe, but who cares if it's hard to do or not? You feel more engaged this way, but you also feel like the game's not patronizing you like a child, though still giving you ground to learn. Okay, so you remember the interactive and passive horror elements I talked about before? Well, this is where it comes into play. Resident Evil 4 has a misconception that its cutscenes are basically just a passive horror experience, when in reality, it's a, it's a mix of both passive and interactive. But it, it's still a game, remember? It's still an interactive horror experience. And this cutscene is a way of demonstrating that. So Leon enters the room and, oh, it's just, it's just an old guy or something. Some old Spanish geezer, oh, oh. But here it seems like it's gonna be out of the player's control. Here Leon's kind of at ease, like, psh, it's just some old guy, like some old stupid French Mexican. And with that also tricks the player into being at ease. Like, ah, oh, Leon's got this, he's in control here, opposed to me controlling him. And when Leon has to react in combat stance to the arisen threat, the cutscene ends and you have to deal with the conflict. The developers could have easily made it so you just watch Leon shoot the guy and begin the next sequence, but no. That'd be passive horror. And that ain't the way we do it around here. So right here, the game drops it on you. Not a quick time event or anything, but using what you've learned in spare of the moment. This is how you teach people stuff. This is how you get a player into the grips with the controls. They mess around with the controls, sure, but until you push them into a position where they need to use these controls they've tried out, that's when they learn. Even in this, like, split second, they learn stuff. For example, when they fire, they'll learn that enemies will stumble and get knocked back. Or that shooting the head does more damage than shooting the rest of the body. These tiny little things you learn in that, that split second. If a menu just tells you stuff like that, it, it takes off all the fun and engagement out of the game. Again, learning through engaging. You're learning these things almost like Leon would be as he confronts the situations as well. And then when you have to confront the enemies outside, you're using the same skills, but in that once safe environment. The level that used to be a place you can mess around in is now hostile and littered with danger. It gives the feeling of progression, you know? Stage 2. Explorative and resourceful mindset. When it comes down to it, there are two types of players. Either A, the ones who want to get right to the point, 
the story, the action, the linear path players. Or B, the players who will literally explore every single option they can before they progress to the next area. There are more types of players than this in general, and these two categories do cross over, but for the sake of this video, let's limit it to these two and keep them separate. Now, while you can play Resident Evil 4 as player A to some degree, the game undoubtedly favours player B and wants you to play with this mindset. The game encourages experimentation and exploration. That the player's efforts do have consequences. Let's, uh, let's go into some uh, uh, examples. For one, how the player explores the first area. If they decide to explore outside the obvious objective, they're acknowledged. Whether it's running back across the bridge, checking environmental details, shooting the wildlife, aiming at other characters, finding freaking ammo! HELL YEAH! The game acknowledges the player's attempts to think outside the box an obvious route. It goes, yeah, I, I, I mean, I could see why you did think that. Even when you're not actually doing anything or even can't do anything necessarily, the game gives you that little nod going, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you, you got the right idea. And in some cases, even rewards you for it. Do you know how easy it would have been to just put an invisible wall on the bridge and gone, ha <laughs> ha, silly player, you don't go away from the path. It's those little details that count. Because the game is littered with these environmental details, and most notably, pickups, which are essential to progressing through the game. And the great thing is, the game rewards you for this. It rewards you for exploring and using your wit, uncovering those Super sweet rewarding items feels like an accomplishment, yeah, but what's important here is that the game's rewarding you for going out of your way in that extra mile in hope of something cool. Your efforts are rewarded. That maybe somewhere there's another crate with an ammo pack. A pack that may well just save your ass down the line. And in the freaking tutorial area, it displays that sense of explore and reward. But if you're not willing to collect things and investigate a bit, the game's gonna punish you for it. It's gonna punish you. It's gonna... It's gonna punish that... It's gonna punish that sweet ass. What the hell is wrong with me? If you just ignore clear opportunities and move along on your Nancy Nancy way, then you're gonna reach a point where you can't proceed because you haven't been resourceful. The game's not gonna tone things down just because you can't think for yourself. I mean, I'm sure some people just run and gun and once they reach a point where that doesn't work and they have no ammo, they're gonna give up and call the game crap. Like, I mean, I guess there's no game design for complete arrogance. <sighs> Man, if you've never played this game, like, you gotta. Like, even if you hate Resident Evil or survival horror, this is a game you gotta experience. Like, even if you don't like it, that's all good. But you gotta appreciate the staple it's had. Or you can freaking play Resident Evil 5 or whatever. I mean, yeah, it's sold more, it's gotta be better, right?